I don't feel like anybody in this room is focused on this thing but me. I feel like I am the one constantly pushing the tanker through the ice. I will auction you right out of here! I WANNA BE A BEE! People seem to love picking apart and half-heartedly worshipping Bee Movie, the 2007 DreamWorks film about an anthropomorphic bee portrayed by Jerry Seinfeld. But what most people don't seem to realize is that Bee Movie has a very long and very interesting history which explains so many of its eccentricities. Today, we are going to discuss why this film is so strange, what caused its most bizarre of details, and why it was even greenlit in the first place. Our story begins in the early 2000s, the start of the new millennium. Jerry Seinfeld, having recently finished work on a sitcom named after himself, is laying low and isn't signing on to many projects. That is, until one fateful day when he was invited to have lunch at the house of Steven Spielberg. During what I imagine must have been a very serious lull in the conversation, Jerry decided to jokingly pitch the first idea that came to his mind. What if we made... a movie... about bees? Now we called it... B-Movie! Much to the surprise of Seinfeld and soon the rest of the world, Spielberg loved the idea so much that he allegedly immediately called DreamWorks to get the idea greenlit. Jerry Seinfeld was now being tasked with the project of creating an entire movie based off of a bad pun that he brought up at lunch entirely as a joke. I really didn't have an idea for the movie. All I had was the title. When reading through the responses to the promotional material for this film, and even quotes from people working on it, one persistent theme holds clear. That being that very few were confident in the premise of this film. Instead, what people held faith in was Jerry Seinfeld's ability to create something that was funny. And it's perhaps because of this that Seinfeld eventually decided that he had to stay as close to the production of the film as possible. Not only did he want to write and provide his voice for the film, he also intended to give daily feedback on the designs, animation, and even the most small of details. The problem was that Jerry Seinfeld had a permanent residence in New York City, and thus it would be somewhat hard for him to work on the film as it was being produced in California. The solution was to build a halo room in both locations so that the two creative forces could constantly collaborate every single day. Jerry would enter complex Skype-style calls for hours on end where he would discuss the material. Making B-Movie meant Seinfeld learning everything that there was to know about making an animated film with no prior knowledge, which is one of the reasons he's often shut down the prospect of making another film like B-Movie. To quote the man himself, My kids want me to do it. A lot of people want me to do it. A lot of people that don't know what animation is want me to do it. If you had any idea what animation is, you'd never do it. And with that, let us discuss how a barely conceptualized pun can evolve into an hour and a half long... thing. So the basic idea that came out of that pitch was that B-Movie needed to feature absurdist, B-Flick-style storylines that would sort of celebrate how ridiculous they were. A healthy way to look at the film is that it's a what-if representation of what B-sploitation would look like. Throughout production, the plot greatly varied, but it eventually settled onto a very basic story structure. Barry B. Benson, a recent graduate from college, would briefly attempt to find work making honey in his hive before becoming disinterested in the life of a bee and traveling to the outside world. There he would meet and become infatuated with Vanessa, a florist, and he would then decide to sue the human race after learning of its illegal use of honey. After this, a series of goofy, barely connected plot points would follow, which would eventually end with Barry in space, having become an astronaut. It's beautiful out here, boys. I can almost see beyond the nebula. I wonder what's past that. That's the end of the Milky Way as we know it, sir. I've got to find out. That was indeed one of the original endings to B-Movie. There are a couple other endings which are also of note, all of which attempted to answer the will-they-won't-they tension between Vanessa and the actual insect. 
The theme illustrated by most of these segments was that they were currently just friends, but they were destined to eventually become a real couple. One ending, which might be of interest to you, would have featured the two sharing a romantic night on top of the building from earlier, with a key question from earlier in the film finally being answered. Is that jazz? You like it? I do. I thought you might. Many of the jokes which were heavily conceptualized during the production sort of half ended up in the movie. For instance, Seinfeld originally envisioned a running gag where character actor Ray Liotta would serve as a sort of cartoonish foil to Barry. Basically the same gag that Margot Martindale does for Bojack Horseman. But in the end, he has a cameo in the court sequence, and other than that, he's not really in the film, and the joke doesn't exactly fully come across. Seinfeld has often stated that one of his proudest creations for the film, which was sadly cut, was that of the Bee Queen. The idea was that Barry would be given a trial with her following his breaking of the Bee Laws, and that she would nearly execute him. The scene was probably cut because the characters and sets for the scene were exclusively used just in that sequence, and were extremely intricate. But it's a real shame because looking at these designs, and looking at the animatics, is probably the best scene that they worked on for the film. Hmm, Spanish fly. If we're talking about the production of B-Movie, we are inevitably going to need to discuss the B-Movie TV Juniors. These were a series of skits that Seinfeld and his fellow crew members created during the production of the film, long before the internet or even the general public really found anything funny about the existence of DreamWorks or B-Movie. Seinfeld was proving himself ahead of the curve by openly mocking both. Here's where we keep the numbers for our sequels. I can't wait for Shrek 19. We want to get more ethnic bees in here because of the yeah. international market. Some of the highlights of these include Seinfeld pitching a movie to DreamWorks and them accepting before he said anything. He loves it, he'd like to do it. Do what? Whatever it is you're about to say. And a running gag throughout numerous skits where animators are represented by furries. Oh, Mr. Seinfeld, please! I can draw! I can draw! Come on! Turtle. And with that, let us discuss the plight of some of the furries who were brought onto the film. The people in charge of creating the conceptualized designs had a huge problem with finding consistent designs for Barry and the bees, which Jerry Seinfeld would approve of. Over the course of more than 10 months, at least 11 illustrators were constantly pumping out design after design, illustrating essentially every possible way that you could draw a cartoon bee. This process lasted so long that they were plotting out scenes in the movie before a design had been chosen, so every storyboard artist used a different design for their main character. A key problem was that Jerry Seinfeld wanted his bees to have black and yellow stripes on their clothing, and it was very difficult for anyone to figure out a way to design characters with only two colors. In terms of 3D animation, B-Movie was a landmark case in many different ways. For instance, it was allegedly the first time that a cloud had been fully rendered for an animated film instead of just being a still image in the background. In total, the film took about 23 million hours to render. The numerous hurdles for animating the film included finding ways to realistically render honey in numerous states and appearances, and finding a way to render bee butt fuzz. It might sound silly, but a legitimate challenge for the people animating this film was that they had scenes with thousands of bees, and their 3D programs could not handle that much butt fuzz and would simply immediately crash. Because of this, an alternate version of the butt fuzz had to be developed for people further away from the camera. In the same way that a video game developer might have different textures and even models for things further away from the camera, entirely to increase functionality. At the time that B-Movie was entering production, a sadly mostly forgotten DreamWorks film called Over the Hedge was much further along in the process, and the two films ended up being released about a year apart. There is a detail in B-Movie which can either be seen as an elaborate, cinematic universe setting up easter egg, or as a cost-cutting measure that no one was ever supposed to notice. That being that whenever you see a bear in B-Movie, it's actually the recycled 3D model of the main villain from Over the Hedge. So I was on my way down here to kill you, but I stopped to watch the show and I gotta say, that right there is a thing of beauty bears kill bees okay that's enough take him away 
After years of work, B-Movie was finally released to widespread cheers of, eh, in 2007. One of the most strange things that Jerry Seinfeld did to advertise the film was to dress up as a giant bee and zip line down to one of the events advertising the product. What are you doing? I'm promoting the movie. No. You know, a lot of people just go on talk shows and tell jokes. So, how did the movie turn out? Well, I'll put it like this. I like the movie a lot more than most people will. But it still has a lot of problems. Personally, I think the final product is at its strongest when it's putting these characters into absolutely ridiculous situations, and then it's just playing off of how they react to that. And he happens to be the nicest bee I've met in a long time. Long time? What are you talking about? The best character in the movie is Ken, not only because he's played by the always hilarious Patrick Warburton, but also because he's this screaming man-baby beast who also has the most realistic view of what's happening in the movie. He is the most cartoonish character in the entire flick, and he's also the movie's straight man. That's hilarious. Is that that same bee? Yes it is! I'm helping him sue the human race. What? And I honestly think that sequences like the Bee Larry King interview, the sword fight sequence, and even the sequence of them landing the plane, these are some of the most unique scenes I've ever seen in a modern 3D animated movie. However, the biggest problem with the movie is that funny is all it ever proves to be. <laughs> Bee, get it? Making an animated movie about a hive of bees is not a bad idea. What isn't a great idea is making a children's animated DreamWorks 3D movie be almost entirely about a long, tedious, and boring trial. It's a shockingly bad idea. Kids aren't gonna like it, adults are gonna find it patronizing, no one gets anything out of this. Seinfeld's writing seems to be at its best when he sets up a simple situation and then sees how characters react to that. That's why his show became known as a program where nothing happened. Not because the program is plotless, because it isn't, but because it could explore situations that most couldn't entirely because of how entertaining these characters proved to be. But when it came to making an epic, action-adventure, crime-drama animated movie, in a lot of ways, poor Jerry just didn't know what he was doing. It's a hilarious film, an incredibly hilarious film, but you can't really give it any credit other than that. It's not well paced, it's not super interesting, it has scenes which depict moral lessons which literally make no sense and are not applicable to the real world at all, and most of the things in the movie should have been scrapped and reimagined the moment someone brought them up. I guess in the end, B-Movie is like a really huge, really ugly sculpture. It's not great, and everyone except for the artist knows that, but that was a man's life, his passions, his aspirations, his vision come fully to life. And I guess I have some sort of respect for that in the end. So to end this video off, I wanted to discuss with you guys some really weird B-movie merchandise that I managed to get my hands on. However, first, I want to discuss with you guys how I've updated QuintonReviews.com. As you guys can probably guess, this video is again sponsored by our old friends at Squarespace. Do you know I realize we're making this video? Squarespace.com is an incredible website. Everything's sleek, everything's modern, and it's incredibly easy to get from point A to point B. What better sign could there possibly be that this is the best website development tool out there? If Squarespace can use their own website to become a massive, celebrated brand, as they have, then it's honestly the choice that you should use to do the same. As you guys know, last month I asked you guys to send me questions for a Q&A tab, and you guys sent plenty. Thank you so much. However, in order to play into a joke I made in that video, I wanted to try and make this page look as dated as possible, and it was a little tricky with the template I had chosen. But with the help of the 24-hour support team, I was able to do a pretty alright job, I think. So if you go to the website, you'll be able to see all the answers I gave for those incredible questions that you guys sent me. And if you guys want to develop your online presence and grow an audience like I have and like Squarespace has, then go to squarespace.com slash Quentin or check out that link in the description to get started today.
That's squarespace.com slash Q-U-I-N-T-O-N. Try and remember that, there's gonna be a test later. And with that, let's look at some of the very bizarre B-movie merchandise that was released to coincide with the film. The idea of merchandise for an animated film is that if the movie doesn't do too well, but kids still love the toys, then the production is seen as justified. And one of the things they made were these cute little stuffed animals of Barry with little unique shirts like this one which says, Varsity Sting Team. It's got a little stinger on the back indeed. Then there's this cute little thing, it's a Christmas ornament. You look at that, it's pretty terrifying I think. You look at that, right there. They also had a series of Pez dispen- wait, this is the Meet the Robinsons thing again. They had a series of Pez dispensers. This one's Adam. This one's Barry. This one's Barry as a Paul and Jock. And they had a Vanessa one, but I don't think I have the Vanessa one. There's that guy again. I mentioned this in a previous video, but it's so preposterous I have to bring it up again. Uh, you got B-Movie Honey right there. And you can eat that with your B-Movie Spoon, which came in cereal boxes. With little Barry having a heart attack on the end of there. I've got a couple DreamWorks-style Valentine's Day cards. You got Shrek, got Madagascar, then of course you got B-Movie. Such romantic ones as, um, Valentine! You're the bee's knees! <laughs> they're, they're good, they're good, they're good. This is the official B-Movie reference book. It gives you all of the B-Movie lore that you need to know. For instance, if you ever want to know about the news anchor bee, this book has got all the information you're ever going to need to know about him. You know how every time a Star Wars movie comes out, they make a big glossy book showing all the production art that they didn't use in the movie? Well, this is the B-Movie version of that. Then, of course, you've got your B-Movie Happy Meal. Inside there, you got your B-Movie Milk and your B-Movie chocolate milk, and your B-movie stickers, and of course you also have your B-movie Happy Meal toy. There, there are I think about ten of these. Some of them do things, and some of them have voices. Uh, hello, hello, hello. That was a little weird. Look at this, look at this, look at this. medication. Is he like, is he wearing like, uh, skating? Is he skating? Hold on, I'm trying to remember where I put the last thing down. I bought it, but I've had no need for it whatsoever, so it, it could be anywhere. And that is this drone that is shaped like Barry Benson. Look at that. Take it all in. T look at his little stubby legs. Look at that. Oh my god. Look at that. I'm gonna... Wow. <laughs> I know what you're thinking, and I've tried. It doesn't work. It did come with replacement wings, so if, if it turns out that's the problem, we're in the clear. Alright, that's it. Say goodbye, Barry. Goodbye, 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 goodbye!